but it was a, a big flow of young uh, men from Greece, Spain, uh, later Turkey and Morocco who came to the Netherlands to, to earn money. But uh, what was not anticipated that actually uh, they did not come alone because then they were applying for uh, a visa for their spouse and their kids and what have you. Uh, so uh, there was a big migration flow started to occur. It was never planned. It just happened. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, this was kind of unforeseen that uh, uh, all of a sudden we were confronted with uh, with millions of uh, of, uh, of people from from uh, south southern Europe. Well, southern European people went back. The Greeks went back because the Greek economy started to pick up. The 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 Spanish economy started to pick up, the Italian economy started to pick up. So they, they didn't have to stay, but North America, North Africa, uh, Morocco uh, and, and, and Turkey, etc., they still have a big economic gap between the Netherlands, the wealth, wealth, uh, wealth in, in the Netherlands and the wealth in uh, Turkey. So they didn't go back. They, they, they were building up their lives in the Netherlands. But at the same time, nobody who came to the Netherlands wanted to be Dutch. They just wanted to make money. They could make good money and uh, and w and everybody had the dream to go back eventually. So they didn't buy into our ideology, into our culture, and uh, they just built up their own life. Now we had this system of multiculturalism that meant that everybody was free to, to do whatever they wanted to do, to believe whatever they wanted to believe. If you wanted to build a mosque, then build a mosque. If you want to open a lot of Turkish uh, food stores, go ahead, you can do it. Uh, there, and, and, and the idea was to build this beautiful rainbow society. But what actually happened is that they built their own culture within their own culture without any necessity to interact. That was fine for both sides, for uh, the Turkish side and for the Dutch side, for the Moroccan side and for the Dutch side. Um, but when the second generation was born, they realized that uh, what's what's going on? I, I have to go to a Dutch school. I speak Dutch fluently. I have a Dutch passport. Why am I not treated as a Dutch person? Because there there are uh, it was an isolated society. So these guys they want to work for Dutch companies, but Dutch employers rather employ Dutch-looking people with the same cultural background. Um, um, plus, because their parents were not Dutch, they often had a little bit of a, a disadvantage in developing themselves because uh, uh, the difference in ed well, educational background at home. You don't only learn at school, you also learn from, from your, your house situation. So this led to a, a disconnect between the second generation immigrants and the, second, and, and, and the, the Dutch population. Uh, People didn't feel at home in the Netherlands. They didn't feel that they were first-rate citizens, and that led to a lot of conflicts, criminal, criminal behavior, because it, uh, they would not do that it, it, to their own people. Their own people being the Moroccan people, the Turkish people, but they would do that with people who they felt no connection, the Dutch <coughs> people. So how so, are you going to solve? This so problem? how are you going to solve this problem? I think it's just a matter that you need to go through. Um, basically, th there. It was be believed, based on research that was done about multiculturalism, that the best approach was the French approach. The French, French approach. The French approach means... Uh, Assimilation? No. Basically means everybody's welcome, but you have to obey <coughs> the same rules. Don't expect any favors from us. Don't expect any special treatment because under the French law, everybody's the same. It's the same, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. There, yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. That, then, then assimilation. That is uh, exactly the thing. And we saw many more problems in Germany, in the Netherlands, um, in England, a lot of problems in England as well, uh, where there was a multicultural idea, where they were trying to support groups to actually uh get up to speed with, with the rest of, of society um the the, the the criminal statistics the economic statistics were uh, proving france right uh, and their approach was better mm -hmm. but recently we see that france has the same problem mm -hmm. as, uh, as as the rest of europe so i don't think europe has found the best answer creating a multicultural society is very hard 
Japan is very right that they are very careful um, uh, allowing foreigners into Japan. Um, but <laughs> yeah, sure, 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 sure. Yeah, uh, roughly speaking, uh, the, your visual, uh, the as aspect, mm. uh, the two aspects. Uh, but uh, if we look into the, the detailed situation in Japan, oh. uh, we also have uh, so many uh, the issues uh, internally. Mm. Uh, it's uh, actually since uh, our nation is uh, one nation with one. Actually, not uh, that much, sorry. And uh, so uh, it is not, uh, how do you say, known too much even for the Japanese, but uh, we already uh, accepted uh, so many refugees from uh, Central Peninsula. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I, I already explained uh, many, many, many. Uh, yeah, before, about to go, yeah. Yeah. So that uh, I myself feel that so we, Japan, also fa are now facing to the same situation. In a variety of aspects of our society, uh, everything is changing, and uh, it's uh, even difficult to keep our identity. Yeah, of course now the <coughs> most of Japanese doesn't have uh, the, uh, our own, uh, identity, but uh, uh, even uh, such kind of uh, small how to say, portion of identity <laughs> is all, uh, also going to be lost now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but uh, uh, the but Japan has an identity. Do you feel that Japan doesn't have an identity? They have a very strong identity. We have, a, yeah, uh, we have an identity. Oh, yes, yes, yes. 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 But and, and uh, but uh, the modern Japanese people doesn't have. It. Very few people have uh, 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 their own identity as as the Japanese. As an individual, you mean, or as a, as a as a people? I don't understand. Well, basically, uh, uh, when you say identity, is that the national identity or the yeah. personal identity? Oh, uh, national <coughs> identity. They don't have national identity? We have. Yeah, yeah you do. Oh, we have. You don't no, have? No, no, we don't. But not so many people uh, have a uh, national identity at this moment. We you have a losing a national identity. Really? Yes. Because, uh, so, <coughs> if you ask, uh, for example, uh, like one Japanese businessman or uh, the senior high school student kid, uh, what is your identity? Mm -hmm. But uh, I think uh, eighty percent to ninety percent, uh, they cannot answer. <laughs> but to your I, question. in the Netherlands, the same. Uh -huh. It's the same. <laughs> 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 no, you, this, so, is, um, this is a big difference from among you and Japan. <laughs> <laughs> you are grower. Japanese, you know, we don't have identity. Well, basically, we... we Japanese not global, but not identity. <coughs> oh, that's actually, that's a very good point. Because I, I really don't, I really <coughs> think that 90% of the people in the Netherlands would not be able to answer that question. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, our identity is more or less that we are globalized mm -hmm. people. Yeah. Because we have always lived, the, the country is so small, mm -hmm. we always had to be... In direct contact with everything outside, because basically <laughs> we could even not sustain ourselves if we if we live in isolation. 